Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we're going to be making our ray gun. This is part two and we'll be texturing. I'll also be talking a tiny bit more about the modeling. If you get stuck at all, make sure you comment below or go across to the Discord server. Do check the description because I update things in there and that has links to other playlists which you might find useful. You can also check out my website, gabbit.co.uk and that's got lots of free beginner courses. Okay, so let's take a look. So here's the finished ray gun and I've got some sort of zappy things out the front here. Lots of people are asking about the thing at the back. So let's go to rendered mode just quickly. And you can see, strangely, when I move around, it looks like it's bubbling, but that's just Eevee. So let's zoom into that with full stop or period key on the numpad. And you can see what I've got going on there. So I'll just quickly show you how to model that. I'll go back to solid mode and I'll create another one out the back here. So shift right click to place my cursor onto my object. In fact, it's slightly easier if you go in the middle, then you only have to rotate one way. So I'll go at the top here for some fun. So I'll shift right click here, shift A to add, and I'll add a cylinder. Now I'll keep it very low poly again. So I'll go to eight, because we add our detail with our subdivision surface modifier later. I'll scale it down and move it into position. Let's go to front view with one on my numpad and scale it down a bit further and just move it into position like so. So looking at the shape, it's got a sort of bulbous bit here and then it goes in at the top. So let's go to edit mode with tab, control R to set a loop cut and bring that up to the top, S to scale to bring it out and we have our basic shape. Now when I add the subdivision surface modifier across to the spanner or wrench if you're American, add modifier, subdivision surface, you can see that it goes a bit funny at the top. I'll up the viewport render and I'll go back to object mode with tab, right click, shade smooth. And you can see it's got slight anomalies along here, but actually 2.8 seems to deal with it much better. I'll just go back to edit mode and talk about why that is. If you want to make it nice and clean, then you have to make sure you haven't got an end gone. Subdivision surface modifiers don't like end gons. They much prefer quads. So an end gone is a face that has more than four edges on it. If you do get any anomalies, then select the face, so three to select face mode or select faces up here, select that top face, right click, poke face. And that will turn them into triangles. And the subdivision surface modifier does prefer that, but ideally it prefers quads. And you can see it's a bit smoother. Doesn't make a lot of difference really in this case. It might make more difference if you have more subdivisions in your original cylinder. So back into edit mode and let's just edit our shape a little bit. So let's scale these in. And we need to squash these ends down a bit. So control R for a supporting loop, drag that down to about there and that's fine. Then I'm going to grab this face loop around here. Have a think how you do that yourself. So three into face mode, alt left click on one of these edges going across the face loop where you want to select. Now I can extrude this out. So E to extrude, S to scale and it comes out. And I'm going to press shift Z so it doesn't go in the Z axis. It just comes out like this. Now it looks a bit strange at the moment, like some sort of squid, and we need to sharpen up this area in here. So have a think how to do that. In order to sharpen areas up with the subdivision surface modifier enabled, we need supporting loops. So control R, add a loop cut and drag it down. Now there are other ways to do this, like edge sharpening and so forth, but I feel like this is the best way for learning. And there we go, we've got our shape similar to over here. So I can sort of rotate this into position, rotate by the Y axis, so R then Y, and it's nicely into position. And it does need a bit more modifying to look like the other one. So I'll quickly tidy it up now. And there we go, that looks quite similar. So how do we make the liquid inside? As you can see in render mode, we've got this liquid. It's fairly simple, it's just a cylinder that's inside. And I actually put another one of these sort of bulb things inside, but that's not really necessary to be honest. Just place a cylinder inside, and if you've angled it, then you need to change the top face so it angles down. I'll quickly do that now. My cursor's already in the right position, so back to solid mode, shift A to add, mesh cylinder. I'll scale that down, somewhere about there, add a subdivision surface modifier, and let's go to wireframe mode so I can see what I'm doing, and into edit mode with tab. Now I need a supporting loop at the top here, so control R, it's a little bit tricky to see when you're in edit mode, but you should be fine with a bit of practice. Let's grab this bottom face and move it upwards. And I need a supporting loop for that bottom face. So control R and bring that down. And I think the top face needs to be scaled up. So let's press the proportional edit this time 
and press S to scale it up. Bring that circle down just a touch. The proportional edit will edit the faces underneath as well. And at the moment we won't be able to see what this looks like until we start setting the transparencies. So we'll go on to a bit of texturing now and then come back to this later. So back into object mode, back into solid mode, and let's work on the textures. Now I found this much easier to separate my object out into different sections. So I've quickly gone back to my previous one and I'll show you how you can cut it up to make it easier for texturing. So with the main body of the gun selected, tab into edit mode, and let's start separating the mesh out. So let's start at the front here, three into face mode, or press up here, and you can press control plus on your keyboard and that will grow your selection. Can you see it growing out there like this? And that will go all the way across your object if you let it. Control minus will bring you back. And I want the front bit to be separated. This bit I want to be a different color from the outside bit here, so I can press P now to separate it. So remember that with P to separate. And I'm separating by selection. And you can see it becomes its own object. And I can continue this by selecting this edge loop here. Control plus. Now just watch out a little bit because it's difficult to know where this edge ends. And you can turn the cage off to see exactly where you're at. And you can even turn the subdivision surface modifier off if you need to as well. So I want to end it here rather than here. So control minus to go back one and P to separate selection. And we'll just keep doing that around our object. So Alt left click and then the plus on your numpad all the way into here. P to separate selection, Alt left click, Control plus on your numpad. A quick look in there, see how far I want to go. P to separate by selection. And this last bit as well, I think. I can actually just press Alt left click on this one and it will grow the selection both ways. So it'll come this way and this way. And there's no more to go this way, so it'll just keep going this way. Hopefully that makes sense. And then P to separate selection there. I kind of like the low poly look actually, it's kind of fun. So you don't have to have the subdivision surface on. But let's put that back. Now, it looks like it's gone wrong because it's only put it back on the shape that I've got selected. So if I come out of edit mode at the moment, back into object mode, and just make sure all these are back on because they're all separate objects now. That should make it a lot easier for texturing. You may also want to separate these objects at the end here and here, as well as this object here. I'll just quickly do it for this one. So you can see the effects of that. So into edit mode, Alt left click, Control plus on your numpad, P to separate by selection. And there we go. So the same for the wires. So I'll quickly go through the wires now. Now interestingly, I've got loads of loop cuts on this particular one, and there's no real need for them. I must have just been demonstrating something. You can get rid of loop cuts by pressing two or going up here, and then Alt right click, Delete, Dissolve Edges. I've got some supporting loops there so I can leave those in, but I don't necessarily need them that sharp. This one isn't as sharp as you can see there, and I think it looks just fine. I prefer it to the other one, in fact. So you can choose. So just this one cut up will be fine. Let's go across to the Shading tab now for some shading. So when you're into Shading tab, you'll notice that you're in Look Dev mode, which is fine, but you won't see much in terms of your lighting. It's a good place to start. So let's start with the main body. Click on the main body and add a new texture. Now it may be that you've already got a texture there. If you have and you start editing it, it may be linked to all your different objects because they may share the same material. If that's the case, just create a new one here and then it will only be this object that has that material unless you actually apply it to other objects. I'll talk about that more in a second, but let's edit this material for now. So I made my body quite red. So click on the base color into your color wheel and pull it down to red. You can make it lighter and darker here if you like, but I'll let you decide on the color. Now mine was very metallic, so I pull the metallic all the way up to one. Now objects are either fully metallic or fully dielectric, which is non-metallic. So this should be, if you're being realistic, one or zero. I made mine quite shiny, so I brought the roughness down and you can start to see the background. And that's what you can see in look dev mode because it has sort of fake HDR eyes in the background. You won't notice that yet in rendered mode, as you can see there. We have to put an HDRI in the background ourselves. So back to look dev mode. And I'm fairly happy with that material now. I think it looked great. I had the front of my object with the same sort of material. So I can click that object and I can select the material down here, which is called material 001. It'd be a good idea to name it shiny red. 
so you can find your materials in this little drop down just here. Next, let's go for this bit here. Now I think I did some sort of silvery material here, so add new. Now pause the video, have a go at making silver material yourself, and then come and see how I did it. So hopefully you managed it. The base color is sort of medium gray, and then the metallics all the way up, and then the roughness is down, and you've got a sort of silvery material. Okay, so let's go for this sort of rubbery bit here. Click a new material. Base color is gonna be fairly close to black, and the roughness isn't really shiny. It's gonna be around two-ish, is it? Yeah, somewhere around two, maybe three actually. It depends how you want to make your sort of rubbery plastic stuff. But it's not metallic. Metallic would look very different. Now you can sometimes bring the specular down, and the specular is that sort of sheen that you see across it. And it tends to be a bit high, I think. And point two is a bit more realistic. But that may be my opinion. Don't worry too much about the specular. I think my roughness needs to go up just a touch more and I need to make the color even closer to black. I don't like going all the way to black, but in this case, maybe it works best. And that looks fine. Let's go to the front, and I want to share this material so I can go in and find that material. Now I've got two materials that look very similar, so I should be labeling these, but I know it's this one, and I'm going to call this rubber. Now let's add an emission to this one. So let's click on that, new, and there's a couple of ways of doing this. I prefer to use the actual emission material because we've got an emission down here in our principal PSDF, which we can change. So turn that all up to white and give it a color. And now it's emissive. But we can only get an emission of one without some awkward node setup. It's much easier just to delete the BSDF shader. Be careful that you haven't got them both selected and press delete. Just select one and press delete. Shift A to add or you can go to the add menu here. And then you've got shader, emission, and then bring that in and plug it into the surface. Now we can get our nice blue color, but we can put the strength right up. Now you'll notice in Eevee, the emission objects don't actually emit light, which you may ask, why, what's the point of this? It's because when you go across to your bloom in your render settings, it will really glow. But I'll talk more about that in a second but that's why I like to put the emission object on and turn the strength up. Let's finish off painting our object. I'll leave you to do the grip and the trigger, but I will show you how to do the glass because that can be a pain. So up the top there, choose your glass object and give it a new material. Now still on the principal BSDF, to get it to be translucent or see-through, you turn up the transmission. Now you'll notice that has no effect. What we need to do is press N to get our tools over here and go to options. We need to change the blend mode to, I believe, additive works the best in this case. Alpha hashed should be the best option, but when I painted it, it was a bit of a pain. Along with that, you'll need to tick screen space reflections, and you'll need to come over to the render tab, the render tab here, and click screen space reflections there as well. Now that will help all your reflections, which is nice. You can see they're starting to reflect each other, but also in here, you've got refraction, and you'll need to have that turned on, and that should, turn it see-through, and it does turn it see-through. Yes, it is working, but I think it's our IOR, or index of refraction. So actually turning this down, and yes, it's working, but it's in look dev mode at the moment, so we're not seeing the background behind it. So you can experiment with the different modes here, and I found additive just to be the easiest, because it just makes it quickly see-through, and it seemed to work the best for me. And you can also play with the index of refraction and turn that up and down as you see fit. And you can see the additive kind of works nicely in this particular scenario. So you'll probably want to give your inside liquid an emission color. I added an emission to my wires as well. So let's go back and see what I did with the rendering. So here I am back in my end file and let's go to rendering view. And there's a couple of things I've done to make it look fun. Let's go across to the shading tab so you can see them. Back to rendered mode. I'm just going to get rid of my animation tab, which we'll do in the next session. And this should be fairly similar to the normal shading tab that you see. So I've gone from look dev mode, which looks like this, into rendered mode. And that will help with seeing things like the transparencies and I've got an HDRI in the background. And I'll go through that in just a moment. Now I've not done anything special for the other bits. They're just a principal BSDF. And I actually change it to gold instead of silver, but that's just a mustardy color with the metallic. In terms of what I did in the render, Here's the render menu just up here. I've turned ambient occlusion on. It doesn't make a lot of difference, but 
in these crevices here it just gives it a bit more shading so they're turned off and turned on often you have to turn the distance up a little bit to make it have any real effect so i've got three and a half meters roughly here it does depend on how big your object is in the first place the other thing that's important to me is the bloom so if i turn that off and on you can see the effect that that's having the threshold is what is bloomed so if i turn the threshold up it takes away the bloom because less objects are in that threshold in other words bright enough to offer any bloom so when i bring the scale down you can see the bloom turning up because areas of brightness are falling within this threshold so you can see the red even here where it's brightest is starting to offer some bloom the radius is kind of how wide it is but i tend not to mess with that too much you can offer a little bit more just for a little bit more glow the intensity is how sort of bright that is so if you turn the intensity and the radius up those bright bits become very bright with intensity and wide with the radius i'll turn those down so they've got a nice sort of sheeny glow and the intensity down just a touch don't go overboard with that it can look very cheesy and as i talked about earlier i turn the screen space reflections on and have refraction ticked you can also turn half race trender off so i've unticked it and you can see what that does that just offers a bit more clarity and detail now lastly for this particular episode is the hdri in the background so in the shader editor we go from object to world and you can see my background here it looks fairly complicated but it's nothing really to worry about so i'll delete this and plug the background in and that should be what you see so in order to get an hdri in the background we plug an hdri into here so shift a to add texture environment texture remember this is an environment texture not an image texture lots of people make that mistake and you'll need to download an hdri hdri haven is a nice place for that and i'll show you what they look like if i open one i've got a folder of hdris here if you want to be able to see them then you click on this button here which is display mode and shows you the thumbnails and you can see they're this sort of weird warped images like this you can actually use pretty much any image but hdris a high dynamic range and have lots of detail in the color now it does make a difference which one you choose because it will impact the light of your object so this one will offer orangey light this one will offer slightly bluey light and this one will offer sort of grayish color light so these are quite good ones because they're gray they don't change your colors too much so i'll just click on that one and then plug it in and we can see that it looks pretty nice in fact i prefer that one to my other one you can turn the strength up with this to make your object a bit brighter but we don't want it in our render so i'm going to copy this background here so shift d to duplicate and i've copied it and put it down there and i want to mix these two together so i move the world output across a bit shift a to add and then shader mix and i'll place that in the middle here and hook these two up to the mix and then hook my mix shader into the surface nothing's happening at the moment but i can mix between the two there's my one with the hdr and there's the black one so i'm just mixing between the two currently i've got the black one at three i'll turn that down to zero and then it'll be completely black looks a bit odd at the moment but you can see that i can mix between the two like this but what i need to do is set up a light path as this factor so the thing that's changing it here i want it to be to do with the camera it's difficult to explain but basically follow along so shift a to add input light path if we bring that down there and we just go from is camera ray to the factor now we see the black down here but the reflections are coming from this one so you just have this node set up fairly simplistic and just follow along don't worry if you don't understand it too much with practice these sort of weird nodes will make more sense so that's enough for this particular episode in the next one we'll be doing the zappy weird things and a bit of animation thanks for watching i hope you're enjoying it remember to put in the comments if you're having any difficulties and i'll get back to you see you next time